Stand on the shores of eternity. Stand in silence and listen to the rhythmic rhyming chimes of time. Close your eyes and see the mossed and whitened stones of infinity. Speak with lips of tranquility, of a love divine. Inhale the scent of history as you stand on the shores of eternity. Good morning and welcome to Loch Gore, magical and mystical Loch Gore. The inspiration for that poem came to me when I was down here by the shores of the lake one morning early. I was here for sunrise. And when the first beams of sun came up over the hill and shone out across the lake, I felt as if I could reach out through five, six thousand years of the history, the magic and the mystique of Loch Gore. And indeed, Loch Gore is a magical place. Loch Gore is home to the fairies. But I prefer to use the Irish word, the Gaelic for the fairies, which is Sheol, the spirits of the mound. And if you look here to my left, you will see Knock Fennel. And Knock Fennel is a hollow hill. And that is the home of the fairies here in Loch Gore. Loch Gore is in the parish of Knock Caney. And again in the Gaelic, Knock Anya, the hill of Anya. And Anya is, of course, queen of the fairies. Loch Gore is also home to Gorod Irla, the poet Earl. And Gorod lives beneath the dark and broody waters of the lake. And ye may well ask me, how did he come to live beneath the lake? Well, this time, if I could ask you to look here to my right. This hill is called Nakadoon. And nestled amongst the trees at the foot of Nakadoon, you will make out Boucher's Castle. But Boucher's Castle isn't the only castle here in Loch Gore. At the far side of Nakadoon, there is the Black Castle, which is now in ruins. And that was the home of Morris Fitzgerald, the first Earl of Desmond. And Morris was in the habit of going for a walk every morning along by the shores of the lake before his breakfast. Good for the constitution and what have you. But one morning as he was out on his walk, what do you think he saw? But a beautiful lady bathing herself in the waters of the lake. And Morris, like any hot-blooded male would do, stood to have a look at her. Or as we'd say around here, to have a good gawk at her. And who do you think this beautiful lady was? Only Anya, Queen of the Fairies. And she put a magical spell on Morris. Not that it took much of a spell, I can tell you. And they lay together on Anya's magical cloak. And what do you think the same hussy did then? Only away with her, home to her people, the fairies of Nakeni. But of course, nine months later, the result of this union was a lovely bouncing baby by. And Anya, being queen of the fairies, couldn't rear a human child. So back down from Nakeni she came, back down to Loch Gore, and banged in the door of the black castle. And when Morris opened the door, she lobbed the baby into his arms and away with her back to Nakeni. And there was poor Morris left holding the baby, so to speak. But what other child said he but to get on with it? And he reared him away the best he could and he called him Gorod. And Gorod grew in to be a lovely little boy. But even though he was a human child, he brought some of his mother's magical powers. And wouldn't he frighten the daylights out of the father with some of the tricks that he'd play on him? Now, if I tell you some of these tricks, do you promise not to try them at home? Okay. Wouldn't he jump in and out of a bottle and twat in the very big bottle, I can tell you? And when the father would be sitting down at the table to have the dinner, and a pig's head sitting in the middle of the table, and the steam rising up out of it, and the smell wafting all around the house, and Morris dribbling at the mouth at the thoughts of the flavour of the meat of the pig's head. And just as he'd be about to stick the knife and fork into the pig's head, 
What do you think a road would do? Only make the pig wink at him. Now, wouldn't that fair put you off the dinner? But the thing that would frighten the father the most was when Corrode would jump into the waters of the lake and change into a fish and swim along the top of the water. And Corrode had many more magical tricks, but I won't tell them to you today, for I'd be afraid you'd be trying them out at home. And as always happens, time moves on, and Garod turned into a fine young man, and eventually became Earl of Desmond himself. And all the people were mad about him, for if you remember, I told you he was known as the Poet Earl. And wasn't he writing songs and poems for the people all day, and passing just laws? Not like the politicians that are going nowadays, with their property tax and their water charges. Water charges in this country, and every time you stick your head outside the door, it's pelting down and tap you. But didn't Garod have a blackness in his soul, and he began to practice black magic. And as we all know, black magic is bad. And when his mother heard this above in Arcani, didn't she go half queer? And back down she came, back down to Loch Gore. And if I could ask you now to look behind me, and you can see the lake and the island out in the middle of the lake, that is known to this day as Gorod Island. And out there, Gorod had built himself a magnificent castle. And it was out there that his mother, Anya, Queen of the Fairies, went. And down into the dungeon she went. And if you think she was half mad, when she heard that he was practicing black magic, it was nothing to the rage that she flew into when she actually saw him practicing it. And she banished him, his castle, and all his knights to beneath the waters of the lake. And I can tell you this much, that put pay to the black magic. For we all know that you cannot practice black magic without boiling up the cauldron. And how can you boil a pot without lighting a fire? And how can you light a fire underneath the lake? But she gave him one reprieve, and that was that he could come up out of the lake riding his white steed, which is shod in silver shoes. And he could ride once around the shores of the lake. And when the silver shoes of his white horse wear out, Garod will come back in his human form. And once again, rule over the lens of Desmond.